talk about who's under contract. Now, when we looked at that earlier, um, there's really only two main guys from this list right here who got a lot of run uh, this year, and that's Zach Collins and Julian Champagne. So Zach Collins uh, played in 63 games, started in 27 of them. Again, that was in the beginning of the season, that first 30 game sample where we tried to win Banyama at the, at the power forward, which I didn't like. I mean, I, I, not that I didn't like, I didn't mind it at all. Like I love to see Victor at that power forward because it's just totally different. Like he just does, he still does amazing things, except it's just not at the rim, it's on the perimeter. But I just don't think it was working out. And I think, you know, it was the right decision to move him to center, which pushed, which pushed Zach Collins down to the center, uh, the backup center position. But he finished still playing 22 minutes per game, 11 points, 5.2 rebounds. Um, something that's very underrated about Zach is his passing ability and able to find cutters, find Devin Vassell, find all these guys in the right spots. He finished with 2.8 assists per game, 1.9 turnovers. That's going to come with it because, I mean, we ran a lot of offense through Zach um, early on in the season. He had a little bit of a slump uh, with games played due to injury. Um, but I love to see that there. Um, Julian Champagne, uh, he started in 53 of his 68 games played this season. Um, that was awesome. And there was something in the beginning of the year where he didn't really play a lot at all in those first 10 or 15 games. Um, but you saw him first guy next to the coaching staff. And the coaching staff was during those games just like always focused in on Ju like if they knew he was going to start long term but they were just going to let him watch and observe and learn and talk and discuss about what his role is um, and how he was going to help this team and how he could help this team. And I think that Julian came in and did a fantastic job of that. Um, sometimes he plays a lot in the first half, not a lot in the second half. You know, sometimes he's closing games. Sometimes he's not uh, just really depends on the night for Julian. But what he does do is come off uh, start when he was starting these games. Um, he was just re ready to play. I mean, I, he was 2.6 rebounds, almost got half a block a game, 0.6 steals a game. Uh, he's only putting down 6.3 uh, points per game, and usually those are on two or three threes that he would knock down most nights um, and just played his role. You know, he was getting after it on the defensive end, doing all the dirty work and just trying to make the life of every other starter out there easier. So the stat line's not really going to show that, but the reason why he was starting is because, you know, he kind of reminds me of, of Derek White. In, in his defensive abilities, the way he's able to put his body on the line, the way he's able to guard, the way he's able to kind of uh, play low to the ground, you know, but not saying that he, can, he can't jump or anything like that. He was awesome. Julian Champagne was great. All right, so let's get to these next two guys, Charles Bassey and Devontae Graham. Charles Bassey, let's go ahead and look at the roster. Let's see how many more years he has. We have him locked up until 25-26. Um, and we have Devontae uh, Graham, who next season his, is going to be his last season on the contract that he's currently on. So let's get back to our under contract players. Um, Charles Bassey was one of the players I was most excited to see play with Victor. Um, and we got to see it like once or twice in the beginning of the year. And then unfortunately goes down with a, with a knee injury that put him out all season long. Uh, Charles Bassey is, is very raw. Uh, in terms of like IQ and feel and things like that. But he's incredibly agile, versatile, defensive instincts are off the charts. And he is a guy that, you know, you wouldn't mind, I, I believe, moving Victor to the power forward for whenever they're on the court together and letting Bassey just clean everything up at the rim, rebound, let Victor get out on the break a little earlier, all that. So I'm still very interested to see Charles Bassey and, and, how he fits and what his role can be and how he can catalyze things for the Spurs teams. Cause I, I, I don't see a lot of negatives there. Again, we don't need him to score. We don't need him to shoot. We, we need him to dunk, put things back, defend the rim and all that stuff. And him and him and Zach, he's not going to have to facilitate like Zach Collins a little bit different, you know, of, of a player there. Um, but still it can be very complimentary to the group that we have. So very interested to see what he can do. Hopefully next season he stays healthy. Now Devontae Graham, I truly believe the Spurs were like, Devontae, we love you. You're awesome, but you're too good. <laughs> you're too good for this plan that we have this season, which is to minimize our our wins. I think you insert Devontae Graham onto the floor, and we, we're kind of seeing it now, uh, now that you know Devin and, and uh, Sohan are out in this last stretch run of the season. We're seeing Devontae play a little bit more. Um, 
and he's doing all these things that we just wish you know we were seeing from the beginning of the season he has a great pick and roll game he can throw lobs with Wimby he can shoot the three he can facilitate he's a little bit undersized so I mean there's 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 that but ultimately I think if we played him we would have been way better and and that's not a knock on the Spurs not a knock on him I just think it was like yo you're a veteran your role this season isn't really to play if we can keep him around for next season, maybe next season he has a little bit more opportunity. Um, but I think he's very capable of playing. The Spurs just kind of kept him on ice all season. And I think he can go into a lot of teams and help them out. And we're talking about trades and stuff like that. Uh, in, in a little while, we're going to talk about that. I mean, he becomes an expiring contract uh, next season. Uh, he can definitely help teams win games. And, you know, I, un unfortunately, he didn't get a lot of sample run this season. But like I said, I think there was strategic decision making in terms of Devontae's role this season. And when, what we saw is him be a great teammate. We saw him be a great teammate on the floor, on the bench, cheering on guys, talking to guys all, when they come off the floor. And he was awesome. Like just like Josh Richardson um, last season, who now plays with the Heat. I believe he's with the Heat. Um, he was a great teammate as well, and, and he did a lot of good work here. And I hope I hope to see him actually in the rotation next season, um, and 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 not on another team because I really do like what he can bring. Um, now, kind of now, kind of talking about Devonte, that kind of brings me back to Blake Wesley. Um, we got to see a little bit this season. Blake Wesley play with Trey Jones. Blake Wesley play with Devonte. Uh, and when that happened, you know, Blake Wesley is naturally a shooting guard. I don't know if you guys all know that, but, you know, in Notre Dame, his size, his ability, and the Spurs are really trying to mold him into, you know, something better, right? But I think as, as a natural player, I like to see Blake Wesley off of ball. I like to see him being able to bring up the ball, make good reads and all that. But I, I think he's more comfortable and, and he can be just as impactful at that two position. And so I like to see um, Blake Wesley play with Devontae Graham, Blake Wesley play with Trey Jones um, and another primary ball handler out there. I think that kind of unlocks Wesley a little bit as well uh, in terms of, of, of what he can bring to the table. So just side note there, expiring contracts, players that we talked about earlier um, are not going to be on the team next season that open a roster spot for us. That's Chetty Osman. Uh, can't say enough great things about Chetty. Uh, I've always kind of wanted him to to try on this Spurs jersey and um, kind of hoping that was during a, a more kind of important time when it came, comes to winning for the Spurs. I think he's a winning player. I think he can bring shooting, defensive tenacity, playmaking uh, to any team out there. So, you know, if, if he ends up not coming back to San Antonio, I wouldn't be surprised, uh, but I don't want to see him go also. So let me see where we're at with this time. Doug McDermott got traded, opens up a roster spot, and Sandro Mamu Kelisvili is a player that I love, man. I love this guy. And there's just no reason why I feel like you know, he didn't do anything wrong. I feel like he should have been playing a little bit more early on. Obviously, he brings playmaking and he makes the game easier for a lot of people. He runs the floor. He can just find he can put the ball where he wants to in terms of passing. Um, I think we did see some nights where there was a, a defensive liability there where you put him on some of the other power forwards in the league and he gets eaten up. Um, maybe on the small forwards, he gets a little bit blown by. So maybe there's some defensive things there that he can work on. But in terms of what he can bring to a team, uh, he's he's someone who I would like to bring back. However, there are some other players that are going to be free agents this offseason who I can easily plug in for all three of these guys. And I'm going to tell you who those guys are here in a little bit. But if we have three open roster spots, you know, one of those roster spots is going to go to our own first round pick this season. Another roster spot might go to the Toronto pick this season. So that's two of these three open spots right here. Um, so really, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how that lottery plays out in terms of who we can bring back next season. Uh, I kind of have a feeling Mamu's time here in San Antonio might be over, uh, but I don't want to see that. Okay. All right, so now let's take a look at our two-way contract situation. We have Sidi Sissoko, who I think has made 
plenty of improvement this year. He's been able to showcase uh, his skill set, his versatility in Austin. Um, but you know how it is with these two-way guys. They, they, they will be there again in the second year for the most part. Uh, Don Barlow played his way out of it, things like that, right? Um, this upcoming NBA draft, there are two second-round picks that are owned by the San Antonio Spurs. So if they do intend to keep those and draft in the second round, uh, we can look to fill uh, the two extra two-way spots that we do have on the roster. So stay tuned for that also during